What's up guys welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Auto and today I just wanted to talk about a basic automotive electric circuit. The reason why I feel you guys need to know this is because this is basically how every single circuit in your car is wired. If you understand how this works you can apply this knowledge to any circuit in a car and you can wire your own and you can diagnose any problem. So to get started talking about an automotive circuit these are the components that pretty much every single circuit is going to have. You're going to have a battery, you're going to have the wire, you're going to have a fuse. Right here you'll see a switch. That switch is going to be controlling a relay and then the relay is going to be controlling the power that's being fed to a load. In my case it's an LED light but this could be anything. This could be your starter, this could be your lights, your headlights, this could be your blower motor, your cooling fans, you name it pretty much every single accessory that's in your car is going to be wired in this way. Now a lot of people would be tempted to just grab your wire, put the positive to right here onto the positive lead of the light and grab the negative lead and put it right here and that'll work but there's a reason why every other piece here is in the circuit. Each, each part plays an important role in keeping this circuit safe keeping it nice and neat and also keeping the cost down. So to get started talking about the circuit you're going to notice here I have a battery. This is where your power is going to come from so make sure that you have a good power source. This is a positive, this is a negative lead. So this wire is pretty important because it needs to be able to hold the current that is going through it. So if this wire is too thin for the load that you're going to apply to it this wire is going to get really hot and it's going to start melting the insulation and that's how fires happen. In order to choose the right wire if you're making your own circuit you need to know how much amperage your load is going to pull and then you need to know the distance from here all the way to the load because the wire itself is a resistor. Very very small one but after a certain amount of feet you know it starts adding up. So you need to make sure that the wire that you're choosing for the circuit is capable of holding that load safely. Moving on from the wire you need a fuse and the fuse is here to protect your circuit just in case there's too much current going through it this fuse will blow and it'll basically cut the circuit here and everything on from here on out will lose power. It's also very important to note the position that all these parts hold in the circuit because for example with the fuse it would do you no good to have the fuse at the end of the circuit because although it, it would help in case of a short circuit that it's going to cut off the ground but if it cuts off the ground right here and then the wire that's actually shorting out is this end over here this whole area is still going to have current and that's going to get really hot and it's going to melt and cause a fire. So with the fuse you always want to have it as close as you can to the power to limit the chance of a short circuit. Another thing to note about the fuse is that if you are working on a circuit that keeps blowing a fuse don't just grab a bigger fuse and stick it on here because this fuse that was originally there from the factory is that size for a reason because that's what it takes to protect the circuit. If you have a fuse that's too big on the circuit the wire will burn before the fuse does and that's how you create fires basically. So this fuse that we're looking at right here, that's a 10 amp fuse. I don't know if you'd be able to see it. They usually have the number written right here. So right there it should say 10 as 10 amps. And there's different kinds of fuses. And they're all color coordinated too. Like these two, even though they're different brands, they're still blue and they're both 15 amps. So most of the time, these are the same colors that you'll be seeing. Just make sure to match the replacement fuse to what came from the factory. Once you've gone past the fuse, you're going to run into a switch. This switch is to toggle the circuit on and off. This switch, in my case, is a rocker switch, which just means it goes back and forth. There's different styles of this. There's a little lever that goes back and forth and the big square box ones. Regardless, this is a toggle switch and this could also be replaced by any other kind of switch like a momentary switch which is like your horn you push it and it only passes current when you're pushing it. Um, this switch could also be a temperature sensor where you'd have the switch 
open or closed depending on the temperature like for your cooling fans so at a certain temperature it'll pass the current and at another it will cut the current another kind of switch could also be a potentiometer which is like a knob and then that'll allow a certain amount of current through depending on the resistance of the knob so as you turn it it'll get more or less resistance allowing more or less current to the load so that could be like a dimmer switch or a fan speed and different kinds of other switches as for the switch is also very important to know which side of the circuit you're gonna switch because this switch will work if it's switching the positive side and it's also gonna work if it's switching the negative side but again the difference here would be that if it shorts out on the positive side you're gonna lose power going to the load and it's also gonna blow the fuse if it shorts out on the ground side you're basically always gonna have the circuit on so you're gonna end up with the load always on so it's basically just gonna stay on until it drains your battery or burns itself out following the switch the current will go over to a relay and the reason why you use a relay is because it allows a small amount of current that's gonna go through your switch to control a larger current that's gonna go to whatever load like in my case it's an LED which doesn't pull that much but this could be again it could be your blower motor it could be your window regulator it could be any kind of motor or load on this side that pulls a lot of current being controlled by just a few milliamps on this one another advantage to using a relay is that normally you would need a big or thicker gauge wire to run that load in the case of your starter you need a pretty thick wire going through it but the reason why you can do that and control it with a simple switch like an ignition switch and you just turn your key and it starts the car is because it can grab the wire the thick wire going straight to the load and then grounding that circuit and it also allows you to grab your switch power from any power source this could be coming from your stereo it could be coming from anywhere really because the amount of power that this switch draws is insignificant compared to what the the load draws so by adding a relay you're allowing the use of a small amount of current to control a big amount of current and that's why you really need to use a relay with anything that draws any significant amount of current following the relay you're gonna come up to the load and like I mentioned in my case I have this LED light and finally we need a way for all this current to get back to the battery so it can complete the circuit in this case we have a ground wire that's going all the way back to the negative terminal on the battery but in most automotive circuits instead of this ground wire you're gonna run into a frame ground so what they what they use to save on this wire instead of having a wire for every single negative circuit in the car they'll just bolt it into the vehicle's frame and they'll use the vehicle's frame as your ground wire to pull all that current back to the battery so one other thing I like to talk about is wiring diagrams and this is just a simple example that I drew out of this circuit so if you're trying to work on a car and you want to find out where these wires are where they go and where they're routed this is how you're gonna find out you're gonna pull up a schematic for it and you'll see the basic parts of the circuit so in my case I have the battery positive and battery negative or this is ground so the battery positive comes from this terminal and it goes down into the fuse that's the fuse and then from that fuse it goes off in parallel because I'm grabbing the same power for both the load and the relay anyway so the power is gonna go through here and it's gonna go into the switch that also means that there's power going into the relay but it's coming off of the the one that's we're not using that's why this one's just out in the open because this one right here this terminal is normally closed which means that right now when the switch is off this should have power so since this one always has power because the relay is off then you want to be careful and you would remove this wire or close it off cut it snip it or do something so this doesn't have a chance to short out anyway so the power is going through the switch 
and this is a normally open switch which means that when it's in its resting position there is no current going through it now if it would be a straight line on the switch then it'd be a normally closed switch and this would be its resting position where it would always have current going through it and following after that switch it goes into the relay and this is the coil on the relay and this coil what it does is a magnetic coil so once current starts going through it it draws in it's a little tab it draws in the tab and it allows current to go through the other leg out into the other terminal and then that'll allow the current to go through and into the load so in my case the load is that light that means that whenever there's current going through it that's going to pull it onto this terminal and it's going to allow the load to have current when there isn't current then it's going to go off to the other leg which is normally closed to nothing so the current's not going to have anywhere to go now after this you'll see that there's the wire coming over here and they both meet up again and that's because they're going off to the to complete the circuit through the ground and then well back to the battery and then repeat the process so again here is where my ground wires are meeting up and then they go right back to the battery this here I just use as an example is a five pin relay because you got one two three four five pins there's also relays that just have four pins so it wouldn't have this leg right here and then there's pin there's some relays that have even more pins than that it'll go six eight then you start getting into really specialized parts for the most part the most common one is this five pin relay though so there you go guys that pretty much sums up a basic automotive circuit and remember by understanding this circuit here you're gonna understand pretty much any other circuit in your vehicle you'll be able to diagnose lots of different kinds of problems and even build your own circuit add your own accessories and work on your own car pretty much anyway i hope this video helps you guys out remember to like comment share subscribe and all those other goodies thank you